No, this anonymous, but it is well, it does it does, yeah. it does say all the things I think this committee needs to do I totally agree with that. I, I wish it had been signed. If people are not signed in front of we get a lot of stuff coming through to us which are not signed and we all Well you might do uh, John, but this is the first time I've mm. had stuff come through to me ah. anonymously by email. But not for the trouble of writing a letter and put the stamp on it and post it to my own address. Can we Thank you. 
was primarily because um, obviously the, the governance of the organisation and the, the, the really critical decisions made within the organisation tend for the most part to sit with, with cabinets and therefore the, the, kind of, the attitude to this was really driven by the people at the, at the, at the top of the organisation which is why initially it's, it's been restricted to the strategic leadership team and, and cabinets. That was the thinking behind it originally, although of course the output from, from this and indeed what we're going to do in response to it will definitely share uh, with this committee, but that was the rationale for initially restricting it to a relatively small group. Just to follow up, Chair, what would you thought of extending that? My own personal view is that I think it is best if we, can, if we, if we keep it to the, the leadership, both executive and political. It's not to say that other members and other officers don't have a voice. It's just that like said, the overall governance of the organisation is driven by the people at the top. Um, and therefore, I think their attitude, their, their attitude to risk probably is the one that permeates through the rest of the organisation. Okay, thank you. Can I just, um, you talked about settling claims, so you talked about the low level, what sort of level we talk about in terms of violence? We set the, the threshold at uh, a maximum of £5,000 for any one claim. We anticipate the vast majority of those are going to be things like uh, tyres and other rules for cars on potholes, quite frankly. Although we do occasionally get claims for um, you know, things that can be seen in schools in people for long years. Um, majority of those property claims away from the insurers for them to give us a good deal of protection in their fees. And that's perfect.
ringing various organisations, also you put messages saying your phone call might be recorded for monitoring and quality purposes. What would be the intention about these kind of discussions that might be present? We don't have a facility for recording our previous conversations. Um, I probably wouldn't be our intention to do that. What we will be doing, however, is uh, on the initial correspondence that we sent out to people to remind them that we do we are part of the National Fraud Initiative and that we will be That's really on the letters from the Zoom Minister for Insurers who will be replicating that because of working with our colleagues and internal leaders. Um, that sort of broad matching exercise is considered particularly valuable, so we will certainly be doing that. Very good. Okay, that's right. Any more questions? Can we agree the recommendation, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Council's Insurance Program is the primary means of dealing with the financial. Because of that, obviously, it's, it's a key component of our approach to managing this. Um, what I've uh, had for you tonight is the proposed insurance budget for the forthcoming financial year. Um, the headline is that we're looking at costs of around £95,000 less than they are in the current year. Um, there were a couple of things that I'd, I'd like to highlight, and then I'm very well happy to take questions. Um, first of all, uh, in section 3.9, what we're talking about. Insurance contracts. Um, just to flag up that we are being impacted by the rise in insurance premium tax, which the central government brought in from November. You probably noticed that in relation to your own merchant from home insurance, that you know that's that has done obviously it has a much bigger impact on the authority than it does on an individual. Um, but I just wanted to flag that up. Uh, the other point um, in that section, but overly on page 38. Um, the top of that page we talk about claims handling and, um, uh, and the, the cost rising. Obviously, the budget was prepared several weeks ago before we concluded the negotiations with insurers on self handling claims, and therefore the, the costs will actually be £20,000 less, which is the same thing that we negotiated with insurers. That's not reflected in the figures that you have here. So the actual savings. relatively minor changes that we're making for 2016-17. They're very much in line with our principle of self-insuring those risks whether we can comfortably cover ourselves. Um, so they're, they're modest changes, but they are in line with our overall philosophy in terms of not paying the insurer to handle things that we're capable of dealing with ourselves, certainly from a financial perspective.
report hopefully provides is a, is a sort of useful summary of where we are in terms of the audit. I'll take you through a bit of headlines from that, obviously, I'll take any questions members may have. Um, so the 2015-16 audit is currently um, we're with the interim plan stage on that. So the team have been on site the last few weeks updating our assessment of controls, systems, processes. Um, and so that, that's sort of what's going on at the moment. Um, we there are two principal elements to the audit which members will be aware of. There's the opinion we give on the financial statements. Um, so in terms of that, the sort of areas we're looking at are those systems and controls, um, but also things like we heard a little bit earlier about the Better Care Fund, that's a sort of new area that will be reflected in the accounts this year. Um, also, essential as well, actually, in terms of. So, discussions are ongoing about how those items will be treated. Looking further ahead, um, the bigger element is something that was mentioned later on in our Mar report, and that is the need to sort of have a different accounting mechanism for highways assets, highways network assets, as it's called. And that's a sort of forward looking thing, which I know we're, we're in discussions around. Um, so that's around the opening on the accounts, but obviously that, that process is going on at the moment. Um, in terms of the value for money conclusion, I'm um, slightly sort of refreshed and hoped for that this year, um, now that the National Audit Office are, are involved in sort of setting that, that particular uh, framework. Um, so we're currently doing the work on that. I think it's fairly clear, and this is the case across the local government, that the main area we'll be focusing on is the way in which the council is managing its financial position and particular sort of medium term financial planning, looking at how that's been set and the adequacy of the arrangements around all of that. Um, so basically we'll bring those two others together around the opinion and the VFM conclusion in a detailed audit plan which will come to the next meeting of this committee. Um, what the report also sets out is a, some sort of emerging issues and developments and there's one particular area I'd like to bring to the committee's attention this evening. So that's on page 10 of my report, which is page 54 of the papers. Um, it talks there about um, audit panels. So just to bring this to your attention, I think we probably discussed it previously. So um, the legislation is now introduced, which as you know, has abolished the audit commission. Um, the audit commission's responsibilities have been transferred over to a number of different organisations, including something called public sector the government has now no, um, sort of taken a decision about when it wants to implement the changes which will result in you as our council or other councils uh, actually appointing your own auditor as opposed to having that, um, having us or any other one actually given to you as your auditor. So you have that, that, um, that comes in from 2018-19 and you will have to make the decision to appoint your own auditor. Um, the, 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 and the body that will do that is something called an audit panel. Uh, and SIPFA just sort of recently in December issued its guidance on what, what's required in terms of the audit panel. So um, you effectively will have to make that decision by the end of December 2017. So it's still some way off, but it's obviously something that you'll need to put some thought into, into setting that panel up. Um, your colleagues on the sort of health side, so the CCG uh, in rural, um, they're a year ahead of you, so they've got to make the decision by the end of this year to start from 17. So, um, hope that's helpful just to give you a sort of update. So, we will bring a detailed audit plan to the, to the, to the next meeting of the committee. Happy to take any questions, uh, Chair, on this particular question. Next one. Uh, yeah, thank you. Just a quick one, really. On page 7 of your report, page yes. 51 of our meeting report, it talks about work and then the comments comment and the issue of unqualified reading assurance report on return. Great. Then it says, without qualifying our conclusions, we were required to report on one issue. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. What was the one issue that you had to make without qualifying? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yeah. I, 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 uh, good, good comment, I think, in terms of that. There, I think there's a standard issue about, about the, the discrepancy between records held in different areas. Yeah? But one of the best things to do is I might like bring this a lot later.
actual uh, get the loins together and take done and dusted. But the other change is for any citizens that want to pour over the accounts now have to do it before they're published finally. So in the past we stuck a notice in the newspaper or on the website that said can we inspect all this stuff and now we've got to get that done before they're finally completed as I understand it. Chair, um, just uh, this is a uh, report that I'll bring to your attention. Um, each year we undertake um, certification work for certain grant claims. Um, the only one that is now um, statutorily required to do is the housing benefits claim. So, under that, I'll just give you a report highlighting to you the 
key issues from that claim, what our findings were, and what the fee was in terms of that. So, so rather than producing a, a long report, we've done it in a letter format, which hopefully is just clear. So just confirming to you that we did complete the uh, certification of the council's housing benefits claim um, by the deadline. Um, as in previous years, and as is the case with almost all the councils, certainly all the councils I've been with, um, there was a qualification to that. Um, we were required to undertake quite sort of detailed testing of the entries on the benefits claim. Um, the benefits claim obviously is for uh, you know, best part of £114 million, containing lots of detailed sales. We were required to test those. So in most cases, we do find a number of errors um, and, and, and adjustments. I think it's fair to say that um, the level of errors we've had here at Brewer is not out of line. It's certainly better than it was in previous years, and not out of line elsewhere. But we are then required to qualify the claim and report those errors through to the DWP, so we did that. Um, uh, and just, so just to confirm, we did, we, we did report that on time, and the fee for that, which again is set by public sector audit appointments limited, um, was uh, £31,800. Um, so that's really just bringing that to the Commission's attention, if any happy to take any uh, questions on that report. Any questions? So you have to give a reason. So you have to give a reason to pass the exemption. In, in order for it to be a valid uh, exemption, you've got to pass a reason. To call it so, a reason. Uh, the committee needs to uh, resolve to exclude the public. If 
human grounds of place to information to particular individuals. 